Hi everybody, welcome, welcome, welcome to the dungeon. My name is Robin and today is Flameworking 102.14. I just wanted to take a moment to say thank you to the following people for their generous support in our channel over the last few years. Vicki, Sue, Susan, and Claire, Crazy Quilter, Bridget, Diana and Lena Jones, Sonia, Dragonfly Gifts, and Maria. Thank you all so much for your generous support. You know, I don't do this really ever, but if you want to um, contribute any funds to keeping the studio up and running, it goes to oxygen, propane, and bringing you guys new colors. You just hit the super thanks button below and you can go from there. Okay, now we are going to do a continuation into, it's kind of a quick exploration into shards. And today we're going to add a lot of silver to these colors. So without further ado, let's get right into this. As always, thanks so much for joining me. I hope you're all doing safe and well out there and I'll see you next time in the dungeon. Okay, just like last week, I'm going to start by applying my color on the end of a mini blowpipe. And this is just a 12 inch stainless steel tube that has a quarter inch or a six millimeter opening. And on top of this, I'm going to apply my black and this is just black 064. And I'm going to start with my first color right there and round it out, smooth it out. And then I'm going to pick up a really good amount. This is like four layers of the silver foil. <laughs> and then I'm going to burnish it down. And now what I want to do is an overlay of the double helix color atlas and the atlas color as i was reading it is four times as strong as the double helix skyron or skiron and the only colorant in this glass is silver and that really kind of sparked my interest in these colors to begin with so that's what i'm adding here is it's like black with silver and even more silver so we'll see how this looks as soon as i blow it out and of course i want to get it as hot as i can all the way through and i'm holding it on the side until it really be gets really round and I'm going to continue turning and slowly start to blow and blow until I get a little bubble going. And then I kind of want to slow down a little bit, but still blow. And this one blew out really strange. <laughs> I love the way these shards blow out. It's different every time. And there is our really cool looking shard. And because it is silver glass, even the thinnest shards will give you a great effect. And I'm gonna just let this cool down for a little bit until I can pop it right off of the little pipe there. And I'll just kind of grab some tweezers and just kind of crunch into it until I have some really nice big and small shards to use. All right, now this next one is um, you know, I thought about the silvered ivory and I was like, man, let's make a silvered shard. So what I have here is uh, probably maybe a little bit more than a fourth of the full rod of a dark ivory. And the dark ivory is kind of like really important here because the elements that make up this color have a beautiful reaction to silver. And so I'm just going to use this color and the silver and that is it. But we are gonna use a full sheet of silver foil here and really get a nice amount of silver going. So I'm just gonna roll this up right onto the glass and burnish it down real nice. And that's pretty much it. You can do this silvered effect on any color that you want to, but the dark ivory really gives you a spectacular effect. So I'm gonna do the same thing as before. I'm just going to heat up everything on the side and get this to kind of like, it starts to round out and that's when you know that glass is getting hot all the way through. And then you're gonna come out, I'm gonna to continue to turn 
And you can tell I, I used to be a glass blower here because this bubble really came out nice. <laughs> and you can see immediately how the silver infuses itself into the color and it just becomes a web work of silver. It's so beautiful. I love the bubble shard as much as I do here um, as I do seeing it in the bead itself. So I'm just going to pop this off and this created some really beautiful shards and these heavy silvered ones here, these are the ones I'm looking for and this is the one I'm going to use in the bead coming up. Okay, so now that we have our magical silvered shards ready to go, I'm going to start making my bead and I'm using just the basic black 064 again from Effetri. And I'm just going to get maybe about an inch, maybe more of this on my mandrel. And I thought it would be interesting to just make a different shape from just a round oval and I am going to flatten it out as well. I love the way that having a flat bead really gives like, like a canvas for the shards. So you're getting like two really beautiful pictures that are gonna happen here. And for this bead, because I didn't want it perfectly round, I'm just going to kind of offset the main part of the bead and just try to fill in uh, about a third of the rod here. And I will go ahead and, or of the bead, and I'll go ahead and add some more color, smooth it all down, and then I'll add a little bit more, one more wrap on the top. So this is like three wraps of black on the, on one half of the bead. It'll take a couple seconds to heat everything up, but I definitely want to also give it some shaping while I while the glass is heating. Okay, so I'm just going to heat everything up real nice. And I do want to heat that transitional part at the top, but I don't want to overheat the top. So as soon as I see that glass melting, I'll just heat the body of the bead and then I'll start to flatten it out. And I don't want to flatten this one out all at once. I want to make sure that everything is centered the way I like it. And I don't want it too flat either. So I'll flatten it just a little at a time. You can use a butter knife to flatten. You can use this um, graphite paddle. If you have a tabulator, you can use that as well. And that is part of our shape. Now at the top, I thought it'd be fun to add a smaller amount of glass. So I'm just gonna add like two wraps on the edge here. Then I'll go ahead and heat that up. And I do want to make sure that I keep the body of the bead warm because usually when you have a flat bead, it will crack all the way down the center because it's really close to the mandrel and it'll get cold quicker. So I do want to keep the heat somewhat in the base of the bead while I work on this top part. And I'm just going to extend that little bit out, well, a small amount heat those parts in and we are just about ready to start adding our first bit of shards. Okay, so I have a really nice looking shard here. And what I want to do is just place it by hand because it's really large. So I'll just heat the bead up and attach just the edge of the shard to wherever I want to place it. And then I will kind of wave it in the back of the flame and starting to heat it up a little at a time. And it will warm up enough to where when I go to flatten it with the butter knife, it flattens very easily. Now I did get a bit of um, over color here at the end. So I'm just going to kind of pull that in and um, cross my fingers that it doesn't mess with the bead release. <laughs> 
And then I want to just take a little bit of time to press the edges of this shard down. And I just kind of like let it do whatever it wants to do in the heat. If it wants to kind of tear open a little bit, that's fine. So this second shard I'm going to add on the top. And I love the way that this melts into the shape of the bead. Just a little bit of heat and it just melts right onto it. And I just want to secure it again with the butter knife. Now seeing how the shard melted to the shape of the bead gives me a lot of cool ideas for future work. So I'm really glad I did that. Okay, I don't want to add too much to this side. Um, I, I just really want to showcase the shards themselves in this piece. So I'm just going to add those two shards on the one side. And now this other side, we're going to add the silvered atlas shard. And it didn't work out perfectly right here, but <laughs> you know, I had to use gravity um, to kind of help me place this shard on this side. So pretty much whatever you can do to place your shard without burning yourself, that's what you want to do. So once I have it where I want it, I'm just going to start flattening it out again with the knife and just get everything nice and smooth on the bead. And then we'll move on and add some more. I thought that this Atlas shard would look really nice layered up a little bit. So we're going to add a couple layers here. And they're really easy to, to lay down. This is such a beautiful and simple technique. I think the hardest part of this technique is just learning how to blow out a nice shard. But even the ones that blow out funny, I mean, they still look amazing. All right, here's the final shard right here. I wanted to get some on the top half. And I'll just gently melt that in a little bit. And I'm noticing the more I heat this Atlas shard, the more it wants to kind of tear apart and, uh, you know, just kind of work with the rest of the glass and kind of like mingle with it. <laughs> All right, now we're gonna add a couple of different elements to this bead. I did wanna add a very fine stringer of the intense black because I know it's going to have a reaction with both of these shards. And I'm sure there's other colors that will react with these shards, but because I had some of this intense black on hand, that's what I'm going to use. And I'll just add a couple of dots um, here and there with it. Why not? I don't want to overdo these elements, but I, I, I think that it is fun to kind of explore different colors to see what kind of effects you're going to get later on. So after I heat this up, I am, what am I going to do here? I think I want to do a little bit of twisting uh, just to get some swirls happening. Kind of breaks things up a little bit. So I have a small ivory rod or stringer that I'm going to just place and do a plunge and twist effect a couple of places in here on the ivory side. And I just love the way this looks at the end. The silver fumes the black and it gives it a blue hue, which is really hard to get with any specific color. It's only a blue that the silver can give you. It's really amazing. So watch for that effect in the very end. And right here, I added some clear dots to the Atlas side because clear also, you know, will play around with that Atlas and give some interesting effects as well. So now that we pretty much have just about everything on here, I will add a little bit more, I think, of the Triton. I had a stringer of Triton on, on hand. So I figured I would heat all of this up and just add a little bit of that color to finish things off. But it looks like I am just going to do another little swirl <laughs> with the black intent before I do this. <laughs> okay, here is the Triton and I'm adding it on top of 
uh, the clear dots on the other side and then I will add some on the edge so it's actually touching the black as well and you'll get a nice effect on the black. I love how these silver colors look on black. It's really cool. It's something fun and exciting to play with. Every time I do this, I come up with something completely different. And as I'm just getting this ready to reduce, I have to let you know that I am uh, no expert at these silvered colors, but um, I notice that I get a lot more interesting effects in the annealer. So you'll notice here at the end, <laughs> I try to reduce, but I can't really tell you exactly how long or how much I'm reducing. I just kind of give it a couple of um, uh, bits of swirling in the uh, in the flame here, and that's it. You know, I have my annealer set at a thousand degrees, and this right here looks very different from how it looks when it's cool. So. I don't know. Go figure. <laughs> I love it and I hope you do too. And I will see you again soon in the dungeon.